This is Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman. You're listening to the Nerdcast on ProjectNerd.com. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? I knew it. I knew you were bluffing. I knew he was bluffing. You're listening to the Nerdcast. I feel like I should say something smart. With Adam, Bob, Iggy, and Tyler. You mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. Only on Project Nerd. But that is one big pile of shit. This is the Nerdcast 226, brought to you by Geek Garage, geek-garage.com. Check out all the geek vehicles, and hopefully, eventually, soon, the geek events that they're all attending to. Well, this is Adam Iggy Tyler here for episode 226. It's been a while since it. When's the last time three of us recorded? And Bob, Bob, poor Bob, a minute, up. yeah. Let me see. I'm going to go look at the podcast page since we really, there's no relevant box office numbers to talk about or anything like this. So mm-hmm. we talked um, about the, I love how the pandemic has finally gotten Netflix to start, not in order, but publishing their top 10. Like here's the top 10 movies on Netflix this weekend or shows or whatever. That's just kind of funny. That might've been March 24th was the last time all of us, at least us three were together. Ugh. That's like a month. Ooh. I don't know, man. People Is love it? the TNA. I don't it's know right. anymore. It's cool. People love the TNA show. It's fine. <laughs> the tna show i like it awesome yeah so you guys filled in we've had some guests like uh phil over at the colorado punk rock army uh, eventually we'll have a couple of our prop making friends on they will probably be joining us next week or so uh last week's episode which was a huge hit on the feed was imagine that you put bobcat goldthwaite's name on the title and it's a huge feed so it was my interview back with him which was really cool but all of us are here this is the, um, I, I believe the image that we have it that goes up on the podcast feed says the uh, the quarantine series or something like that. So social distancing, like we're at 501 or 601. This is a graduate level course now. We've gotten pretty good here at this, but I don't know what day it is. I don't know anything anymore. I did see a meme earlier today that said we all made fun of Rebecca Black's song lyrics of saying yesterday is Thursday, today is Friday. But hell, I'd give for that kind of confidence to know what day it is right now. So, I mean, it is... We don't uh, worry about what day it is. We don't worry about what time it is. It's either coffee time or alcohol time. That's um, all you need to know. Am I drinking it, coffee or am I drinking alcohol? Right. And and you, and you sometimes can do both. Do both. Why not? I, 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 I was actually just thinking about that today. I think my next trip to the store, it might be finally time to... To cross that threshold, I've always, for a long time, pretty much since college, had a strict I don't drink at home alone rule. Like, that's just not a thing that is done. I drink <laughs> in the company of other people. I drink at bars. I'll drink at friends' house. If I have people over, there will be alcohol in the house. I don't keep it in the house for myself unless it's being used for cooking. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to break that rule finally. Okay. I, I haven't had literally any alcohol since the quarantine, since isolation started, but that's oh. going to I think I'm gonna break that rule tomorrow. See, my tolerance level's gone through the roof since quarantine started because how much drinking has been done. There's great around here. I have there's uh, obviously alcohol delivery. I have my groceries delivered, alcohol, booze is delivered, everything. Food is often delivered, <laughs> so it's all been pretty great. Yeah, I, I told you Adam knew about this, so my quarantine story of this week is definitely. Uh, the last couple of times I've had groceries and either done pickup to where you pull into the parking spot now and they do the pickup or you've done delivery. And so I'll order and I order meats and I'm like, oh, this is on sale this week. Ribs. The kids are going to be excited for ribs and all that stuff. Get the groceries. And it's like, no, the only meat that was available was the uh, ground sausage. Like that's the only meat and stuff. So I did the groceries this week and I was like, screw it. I'm going to put so much meat in there that they're only going to be able to cancel so much of it. Something's got to be in stock, right? That's the most expensive grocery bill I've ever had. My freezer is full. I am now one of those asshole hoarders. <laughs> I'm not one of those, but I've had some great steaks this week. I have had some great oh, yeah. steaks. <laughs> so what are you guys up to during this fun week? Uh, 700 or something? I don't know of quarantine. I don't even know. I mean, um, April's had, I think at this point, 17 weeks now. So, somewhere around there. I think today is April 72nd. I'm not sure. I've lost track. Yeah, no, that, that sounds about right. No, I mean, Let's see. This week was this week was pretty solid. We did. Uh, I worked. I've got it really nicely set up at my house. My wife and I get up in the morning. We have a very small house. We have a, our outside table. We bring it inside. We set it up inside. We put our computers on it. We work from there inside the house, plugged in, so our computers charge up. Sun comes up, gets all uh, outside nice and warm. We have our lunch. Move our whole setup outside. Sit outside, do the second half of the day outside with our computers fully charged. It's legit. It's 100% perfect. So you're confusing me real quick, Adam. Before you continue on, I'm confused. So you're allowed Mm -hmm. to still maintain a routine through this quarantine thing? I didn't know. I didn't know that was a thing you could do. I thought we were just all in a panic and just did whatever. Uh, (laughs) Well, I, I mean, we fell into the routine 
via a panic. Does that oh, count? Okay. I feel like that okay. counts, right? That works. I mean, I, mean, I yeah. feel like, yeah, it's a win. Yeah. Did we put that in the win column? And then, uh, then we got to the weekend. And unlike Tyler, enjoyed two days off in a row. Didn't do anything yesterday. It was great. Actually restarted God of War. Phenomenal game. Hadn't played it since I got a 4K TV. The new, the new God of War, right? The newest. Well, the new, two well years ago. yeah, but that's the new one, right? Yeah, it's the new one. They haven't come out with one since then, but it's the first time I played it on my 4K TV with HDR, and oh, that game is gorgeous. Oh, yeah, buddy. it was really pretty anyway, but it is really, really good. Uh, and then got up today and did a bunch of gardening. I was out in my garden for like four hours, planting a ton of flowers, a ton of uh, vegetables. It was a good week. I did all my stuff on Saturday. That's why I don't know what Ty was talking about. Like, I have more reason when I have off two days off in a row to get everything done day one, so then I know I can relax day two because I know. If I don't do it day one, I'm just going to sit here anxious about it, waiting for day two. So we painted a wall, got the garden started, set up the patio furniture. I too have a nice little table for it. And we ate outside last night. It was very nice. The weather's getting super nice. So today before we recorded, we went on like an hour plus long walk. Got to burn off some of those calories because I'm consuming quite a few of them. But uh, I don't know. I think my problem is twofold. Number one is the first day of my weekend now. I mean, I get two-day weekends every now and then, but usually my days off are spread out throughout the week, and now I'm working five days straight and then two days off. It's an adjustment for me. Number one is I am just toasted by the end of the week. So, like, day one, I, I'm i getting up at 10. Is a, is, I'm pushing it. Like, 11, 12 is more likely my speed. Number two is my Fridays now are Saturday, which means my Saturdays are Sunday, which means my Sundays are Mondays, which means I if I'm going to have to leave the house to do stuff, I'm doing my best to leave the house maybe once a week and do everything I need to do in one fell swoop and you can't do that on Sundays so I'm basically just Sunday's getting burned and then on Monday I have to do everything everything delivered dude everything delivered man that's what I'm saying yeah that's not that's I don't have that option it's an interesting world out there right now so yeah it was crazy here they um I know in some states they've started to lift the shelter in place orders here we were going to do a new um it was safer in place I think is what the governor was calling it to where they were going to allow some curbside for non-essential to try to get some businesses going but you still couldn't go in the stores which I applaud our governor here in Colorado for the way he was handling it but um all the areas here all the counties around Denver and everything have gone and got ahead and extended it so we're at least a couple weeks but I'm I'm planning with uh, you know immune issues in in my past I'm planning on just bunker and down through May anyways. Now that we've talked about what we've done, and I'm sure we're going to talk a lot more about that, let's cover a few things because there's still some things happening, right? And we have a lot of really good, what we're calling them, impactful stories. So I know most of you who check out the Nerdcast, check out all our podcast feeds, get us via one of our feeds. So whether it be Google, Apple, any of those areas, make sure you head on over to projectnerd.com. That's project-nerd.com. Check out our stuff because we're doing some cool stories. I don't know if you guys saw I'm really loving what a lot of uh, musical artists and bands are doing right now. There's a lot of good stuff pumping out. What are you guys seeing? Yeah, no, so Goldfinger's doing amazing things. Uh, Tyler and I talked about it last week. Ben Gibbard from Death Cat for Cutie and yeah. Postal Service. He's doing fantastic shows. I mean, there's so many people. Who else? I think we, we put on the site Foo Fighters, Dave Grohl. It wasn't even organized by the Foo Fighters. So that was done through BBC One. Ivor Novello and Fraser T. Smith produced it for... Yeah, all those. And I believe you can download the single and all the net profits will can be combined with any funds raised by the big night in. Foo Fighters are definitely on it, but it's times like these with what? There's like 30, 40 maybe people singing that? I don't know. I've watched a few music things online. I mean, I've listened to a lot of music. I can't unfortunately listen to it at work anymore, which is upsetting. But I try to make sure there's always music playing when I can have it playing and we're a little bit behind on it and i know everyone's already talked it to death but i have listened to fiona apple's new album fetch the bolt cutters probably five or six times through it is so good i don't know that it was originally planned to come out i mean i don't know if it was going to come out this weekend anyway this last week anyway or what the deal was but it came out at a good time in the middle of a quarantine and it's really good album tyler's like if you ain't fiona apple i don't give a rat's ass <laughs> like i'm just saying it's a old really south park there just listen it's a really good album and i might be i i believe you i didn't even know it was a thing i know outside of music uh adam have you checked out a24 is doing a auction of some of their props or some of their movie props or set pieces uh including items from midsummer or hereditary i don't know how it's much all money, the, it's all money the dress in there the flower dress is one of the, the props yes oh sweet jesus i can't afford any i'm sure i can't afford it oh no they were ridiculous if you go there people have bid those up quite a bit obviously I it's bet. for it's for God. charity uh a24 is based out of new york city so everything is for uh, New York City relief. Let's see here. So for eighth grade, you have the time capsule box is already at $2,000. Oof. Uh, heirloom doormat, 
for Hereditary, seven thousand dollars. They've got one of the Furbies from Uncut Gems, the Furby right. necklaces, and uh-huh. like a, a Celtics jersey, and um, that crazy like fuchsia dress that she wears in Uncut Gems is one of the things. Oh, it looks like the Midsummer stuff doesn't start till well yesterday. By the time this airs, it starts on Monday the twenty seventh. So you could you could at least get in there with an early bid and feel like you're you might get it right, like eight dollars. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even see this. So I saw the flower dress and the and the headpiece and the thing, and I saw the bear like the bearskin head covering, like when they wrap the guy in the bear. But the mallet is on the auction. I think what's most interesting is going to be uh, the mermaid carving from the lighthouse. I don't know if anybody saw the lighthouse yet. Uh, He holds it at times when he's busy, like he's doing things. So it's an interesting prop to have. They actually have the light from the lighthouse too, which is really cool. Yeah, I don't know how big it is. It's on there. It looks like it would be monstrous. Um, Those don't start till May 11th. So I guess I didn't put it really clear on our post, but it looks like they're staggering based on the movies but tons of cool stuff i don't know that's pretty yeah i need to know that just like is that like a scale model that they use possibly of the light there's no way that's like the The real like like, yeah i've I've been in one of those lighthouses those things are massive and it's like that glass is like six inches thick well when they're on i mean in the movie when they're up on the light like it is it looks real size so there's got to be i bet you from the wide shots and stuff of the lighthouse and things it's i bet you it's a miniature or something and that that's probably from there. I don't, cause you can't, since that one doesn't open till like May 11th, you can't like really click into it to see too many of the details yet. It just has the pictures of it. That'd be funny if like a, a giant, like 18 wheeler shows up to your house with this. <laughs> so where you want it? Um, I guess I got room in the backyard. I don't know. <laughs> There's some, a bunch of cool stuff from uh, Euphoria, the Zendaya show. Some right. of the stuff from there too. It looks pretty cool. In your neck of the woods, Adam, our pals over at Wild Bangarang have uh, started doing masks. So good old Adam J and crew. Uh, doing masks with uh, profits going to NHS uh, benefits. So I ordered a couple masks and a couple snoods, as he calls them. So they're like the, yes, yeah. almost like the scarf, you know, the scarves that you pull over. I felt like that's going to be a little more comfortable sometimes. Cause I feel like we're going to be wearing masks for a while, guys. Like I might as well just get, oh get yeah. Some I got stuff. a couple masks coming. Which, which one did you go with Iggy? I uh, obviously the wild stallions one. Like, did you, it, did you, did you get the wild stallions? Ones? I got the be excellent to each other. Yeah. One. So it says wild stallions on the one side and on the other side it says be excellent to each other. Oh yeah. I got the one that's just the be excellent. Like, oh, I didn't see that. Across. It goes all the yeah. way across. Um, mm-hmm. And then the other one I got was just more of a, I think it was the chameleon one. So it kind of had like a different color pattern going. And then the snoods, I got uh, just a chain mill pattern and then like the eighties, like retro looking one were pretty cool nice yeah uh, right now i have a i have a couple night i got a blue mask that we that i've worn i've now worn as of this weekend now that i've left my house <laughs> so <laughs> the first job, time, buddy first time in four weeks i left the house so i'm i'll be dead next week but anyways uh yeah uh wild bangering that's over on the site really cool only for la though i know you guys probably saw it, but kevin smith's uh movies pop up movies from first appearing in dogma obviously with the golden calf clerks too is where they worked they have their messy lasagna sandwich with hater tots and the chocolate covered pretzels uh you can deliver it and then obviously all the proceeds go to charity too i mean it comes in like a little like kids meal type looking box like for movies so you got to be in the la area i think it's going for another week or so um, but he's talking about if this is successful, obviously, after everything goes to actually do like a real pop-up pop-up. So that'd be fun. Well, if it's not within a certain distance of my apartment right now, I am have no interest <laughs> in it. Right. But that's a, a lot of good impactful stories going on there, too. Obviously, always feel free to head on over to wherever you get uh, your Project Nerd Entertainment and leave comments and let us know what else you guys are catching up on. I, obviously, there's probably tons of musical artists we haven't even seen doing cool stuff. Other good impactful stories, a lot of great things. As we see a lot of people doing dumb things, I'll put it lightly. We're also seeing it, we're, it's drowning out a lot of great that people are doing too. So there's a lot of positive out there. And we're trying to share that again over at projectnerd.com. Make sure you guys are checking it out. All right. I, mean, I guess that's our show. That's everything. We've covered everything. There's the, <laughs> actually, um, so, actually, Andy Park's... Uh, oh, go ahead. And then we'll no, go ahead. Go. I was going to say Andy Park's uh, a comic book. So Andy Park's that we know over in Kansas City, comic creator. His... Uh, Comic was picked up by Netflix. Uh, the Russo brothers did it with Chris Hemsworth, dropped on Netflix this weekend, called Extraction. So that's gotten some interesting things going on there. By the way, you guys are looking at me right now. I'm assuming none of us have checked it out. I have not watched it. Yeah, no. not watched I it. have. I watched the trailer for it a couple nights ago just to kind of see. Um, the reviews for it have been okay, not great. I hear that it's really, really actiony, like just action, wall to wall action, which I feel like is kind of. Netflix's thing in that sphere. Like, I feel like every time they do one of these movies, it's like, 
we're not going to skip on the action. We might skip on some of the other things. Just watch the 20 minute intro to six underground and you'll know exactly what Tyler's talking about. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I wouldn't necessarily use the expression. I don't, I don't regret watching six underground all the way through, but it's not a great movie and it goes real off the rails towards the end. I'd say so. So that dropped. Uh, what's the uh, the new one from the creator of Adventure Time, The Midnight? The Midnight Gospel, which I Midnight did Gospel. watch. I've watched a couple episodes of and I've really enjoyed so far. So it's definitely, you know, a little bit weird, a little esoteric, but like they do, it definitely feels like they did some some improv like interview slash setups and then animated them. So like the first one is, like the premise is this character basically goes to alternate realities to interview people for his sort of podcast thing and then the first one he goes to is a weird world where there's a zombie apocalypse and he interviews the president and the president's played by dr drew and um, they talk about drugs and hallucinogenics and the zombie apocalypse and it's just while running from running from and killing zombies all the time it's weird it's out there if, if you're into trippy you know absurdist cartoons and i'm into dr like drew only talking fictional and fictional stuff instead of talking fictional on news channels but that's listen, just me i let's say he <laughs> If the timing wasn't great for him to be the the main guest on the first episode of the show. The timing of that wasn't awesome, but it, it's a finely, it's a perfectly good show. There's right. some really interesting ones. There's a really interesting Buddhist one. Like there's, it's a lot of fun. So check it out. And then the uh, animated, based on the child's book, The Willoughbys, have dropped as well on Netflix. So an animated movie there. It's got some good voice talent on it. Looking like it. Uh, that's interesting. We shared the trailer back on Project Nerd a while back. Yeah, there's a lot to watch. What else are you guys watching? I Bojack Horseman going through again, which is going to lead to a lot more articles that I'm going to put on the site because it is reminding me of a lot. The show is so, it, it's just so good and it has such powerful moments. I don't know. What are you guys watching? I made it through I'm Not Okay With This. So it's Yeah, that the, looked interesting. Yeah, the producers of Stranger Things and director or writer of Into the Fucking World and then the cast of It, essentially. <laughs> Um, so anything that's had to do with teenagers or kids, if it's been out in the past couple of years or on Netflix, they had something to do with this. It was really good. One thing I liked about it, not a lot of episodes and they're 30 minutes. So you don't have to commit to a long thing. Laura and I started watching it one night. We were like, oh, we should go to bed. And I looked and I'm like, we have one more left. And she goes, okay, let's just watch it. And so maybe we watched it all in one sitting. It's, you know, easy enough and good enough that we did that. No problem. So did that. And then, uh, we're going, we are apparently very late to the party. Uh, so late to the party that my parents are the ones who finally got us to watch Ozark. Oh, uh, dude, it's so good. The new season's fantastic, too. And we're still on season one. Everybody calm down. Okay. Not going <laughs> fast through Ozark, because that's another one. Th- that one, hour-long episode, so you gotta, it's a bit more of a commitment. And there's some heavy and episodes, too. Yeah, and they're not, not, like, super easy to get through <laughs> always. But my family is from from Missouri. We've spent many a summer on the Ozarks. So it is kind of interesting that it takes place in that world. So that's kind of cool. Did you guys do it's, money laundering while you were out there? <laughs> not as poor as we were, no. I'm not from Missouri, but I have spent a lot of time in the Ozarks. And I feel like you probably experienced this even more, but I feel like this is what it must have been like for people like from New Mexico or from Albuquerque to watch Breaking Bad, where it's like, there's so much recognizable right. about it, but it's heightened to a level that's just like, there's some things you're like, no, no, no. But then you see other things like, nope, that's 100% yep. a thing that probably happened happens. yesterday. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. That's about right. It is a really good show. My opinion on it is season one was really good. Season two is is good. And then I felt like they made some bad decisions there towards the end of the season. But then season three, I was like, fantastic. I don't if I finished that's that. the last exact week. review I got from my mother. Okay, so like one hundred percent, season two drags a little bit. It's a little meh, but if you get through that, season three is great again. <laughs> right? It's it's not even so much that it's meh. It's without spoiling it. It feels like they make some choices in order to make like it, it, you you could go directions here, and it felt like it was going in a way that could have ended the series. And they're like, oh shit, wait, we need to keep going on the series, so let's qu- quickly reverse it back this way, right? Ah, Which we see okay. a lot of series do. Yeah. Um, so it's still good, but I think that's where those areas where she might have meant it was dragging because it's like, oh, we got to drag it back over here. So we've got a lot of like backtracking and explaining to do. And then, uh, yeah, but it, it's really good. And the acting, of course, is incredible. I mean, Laura Linney, 
you know, yeah, Laura Linney Jason and Jason Bateman. Bateman so far have just crushed it. So, yeah. And I feel like, I don't know, I may be wrong. You might've seen it, but I don't feel like I've seen Bateman in anything like that, like in a role anywhere close to it. So we, again, we contemplate almost an exact conversation I've had with my mother. Like my mom should be on this podcast right <laughs> Let's now. Get she, her would, out here. She, would, she would crush it. She could yeah, fill no, in for like, me. Like you hardly ever see him as the bad guy. And I feel like there's somewhere where I've seen him as not the bad guy but kind of a jerk and i can't in remember the, uh, it's the one bad words bad words where he's the the spelling bee where he enters the oh yeah, yeah that's the one yep, yep. he's a piece mm-hmm. of shit in that one and it's, yeah. it's still it's still comedy it's a dark comedy but he is not a good person in that one but that's the I, it's the only one that comes to mind when i think of him being in something that's like where he's not like the affable like every man right yeah and he's really good in it he's yeah, I, I I don't think I've really ever been disappointed with a performance by him, but he's he's pretty solid. I enjoy him greatly, and yeah, it's a good one to watch. Yeah. Well, and uh, Ozark is also like his he's producing it. He directs a bunch of the episodes. He's written a lot of it. So like it's his baby and he's done right. really cool stuff with it. I de- it's definitely the, I put it on the same level as like where Barry's at right now. Uh, Barry is still better than a Ozark just because it's in my wheelhouse more, but like that one being Bill Hader's baby. Like it's in that same kind of like, not quite what you expect them as in, but then just killing it. So was, is what am I watching? Is that yeah, what I'm right yeah. um, I've been watching a lot of old movies. Like Netflix has been doing a really good job of all of a sudden, like all these movies you're like, why wasn't that ever on Netflix is now all of a sudden on Netflix. I had to watch the groundhog day the other day just for reasons. Like, you have to. Yeah. I had to do it. <laughs> it's, I, it's I, like I found real right now though. Like too, that's it, what I, that's where I'm at. It's like every, what day is it? Uh, well, the best was, uh, don't forget you see the booties. It's cold out there. Today. Right. There was a meme. There was you're a meme playing, about it. Yesterday's yesterday's tape, boys. <laughs> there was a meme that said, like, uh, so what did he have to do to finally to get out of it? And they're like, Well, he had to quit living for himself and actually be unselfish and and do things for others. And they're like, which is exactly what all of us need to do <laughs> in order to get out of this right now. I've been watching a lot of shows that I mean, here's the thing. I don't have a problem with shows that's to come out weekly, except in the current climate. I need my content now, but maybe it's better that I have some structure to my weeks based on when shows come out. So uh, Westworld, current season of Westworld has been incredibly good. So I've been watching that every Sunday. Like I, I know I've talked about it on the podcast before, but I am obsessed with the Harley Quinn cartoon on DC Unlimited. Like it's worth it subscribing to DC Unlimited just to watch that show. Season two is airing right now every Friday. Uh, the most recent episode, they went after Mr. Freeze and it was really good. So check that one out. This season is is a weird sort of adaptation of no man's land so like at the end of last season some things went down and now various villains are running gotham and harley and is going after all of them it's really good but yeah lots of old movies i've been considering communities on netflix now i've been considering sitting down and trying to go all the way through community again but it's been i don't know if i have the patience for it right now but it would be my, fun yeah my kids have that on during the day when they eat lunches for school so community but it's a lot of i'm kind of like with you tyler a lot of rewatching. Part of it is I don't I don't know why it's just when I'm getting into something. So the new season of Money Heist dropped, right? And I've talked about uh, what was the La Casa de Papel to Money Heist. I really enjoy it, and I start and I'm just like I I don't feel like anything new right now. I don't know if it's I'm just looking for something familiar or if I'm just you need to be comfortable, right? Like yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't have the con- I don't have the attention for it right now. I don't know that, why. That may be it. Yeah, I don't have the attention. For it. But I have watched I rewatched Hail Caesar the other night which I think is a very underappreciated Coen Brothers. I do. Movie. Yeah, that's on Netflix uh, for sure. We've stopped on that one. Been, I've, so I've been rewatching a lot as well. And I've really been leading comedy, even if it's dark comedy and stuff. I did get Ozark season three in. I think I just it got in the right groove of it. And um, But everything else has been either comedy or even like BoJack level of comedy, which some of that's questionable if you'd want to call it comedy, but it's still so good. We just watched the free churro episode yesterday. That's where we got. Oh, so good. I'm trying to think of anything new. that. Yeah. I've early in the early in the I was watching a lot of stand up comedy because Netflix just happened to drop a lot of specials right around that time. So Burt Kreischer's new special, Taylor Tomlinson's new special, Tom Segura's new special. So I watched a lot of stand up comedy and maybe I'll just watch some more of those. Again. I think it came out slightly before all this started, but the Oh, Hello on Broadway uh, Netflix. Netflix filmed that and aired it. So that's a good one. Too. Yeah, that would have been out for a little while, but I did love that one. And I, Middle Ditch and Schwartz, uh, Thomas Middle Ditch and Ben Schwartz have a improvised comedy special that just came I saw out. that, yeah. And I'm considering watching it. I do like them both a lot. So I bet it would be pretty good. I am watching The Mandalorian every week. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. So, so you, so you stupid, just. Stupid Disney Plus. So you just watched the first half of the finale, then, didn't you? Yes. With Moff Gideon showing up. Mm hmm. Oh. Oh, stupid good. Disney Plus. God, the last two episodes are so good. And I've been doing uh, The Last Dance, the Michael Jordan ESPN documentary. Oh, yeah. How are you getting that? If you uh, play. Netflix. <laughs> if, oh, okay. Oh, you guys got it on Netflix? Get in the UK. You get, you get yeah, stuff just I, wherever. I get it on Netflix. Speaking Great. of The Mandalorian, I've been doing a lot of 
internet window shopping. I haven't been buying, trying to buy anything, but I've just been looking at stuff. I've been working on a lot of my miniatures for like Warhammer and stuff like that, like trying to build miniatures. I was looking at a lot of figures. Has anyone seen any of the toys that Hot Toys is making for the Mandalorian? Because they're ridiculous. Yes. They have this new, the newest one they just announced is the Stormtrooper on the bike, like the, the Stormtrooper on their bike with the satchel with Jason Sudeikis' character, basically. So it's like, this is almost, this is kind of a spoiler for Adam, but there's a, in the next episode, there's Stormtroopers on speeder bikes and they have a model of it and it's so choice. The IG-11 model is amazing. Spoilers, Adam. There's a Stormtrooper in the next episode. <laughs> there, There is a... So the, oh. There's two on the bikes that end yeah, so it's those this yeah, episode, yeah. right? So yeah. it's those two stormtroopers start mm-hmm. the next episode. They have a whole scene to themselves to open the episode, and the episode's directed by Taika Waititi. So I just need you to prepare oh, you God. for that. Oh my God! So their scene is quite possibly one of the greatest scenes in the whole series, and it's the both of them got their own little models with their little pistol blasters and with the satchel with the with the child in it, and it's fantastic. So this week, are we going to watch? Uh, we got uh, we got a new episode of Parks and Rec coming to NBC like full length episode of uh, them all trying to figure out how to connect in the uh, social distancing world. I feel in character, of course. <laughs> right. I think uh, it, obviously also for charity, I believe uh, I can't remember Subaru and one other or is also back, uh, state farm. So state farm and Subaru are matching donations for the charity on. It's pretty cool. So that should be interesting. So that's something else dropping too. Yeah. There's, it, the content's pouring out there right now. This month, coming up in May, we've got what well, we've got started, the right? Course. Yeah, I mean, because that's the thing. Like three weeks ago, it felt like there was just nothing. Like there was this void. But creators have answered that call, I think, and it seems like there's definitely a lot more happening. And I assume some of it was in the process of coming out and just not ready. That they've rushed to get ready now. It feels much better now than it did, like I said, a couple of weeks ago for me anyway. I watched another. So they've done how many episodes now of Saturday Night Live from home? I watched that parts of that last night. That was actually pretty good. Brad Pitt did the cold open. As, yes, I've seen people sharing that. As Dr. Anthony Falke, because basically, I, I mean, I'm assuming he agreed to do it just because he had anything better to do, but I guess someone in a press conference asked Fauci who he would play him in the movie and he's like I don't know I guess Brad Pitt so then Brad Pitt played Dr. Anthony Fauci last night and on Saturday Night Live That's and there was a couple good. there was a couple pretty good sketches so yeah so a lot there I think some of the big topics right now of course is as we like I said get ready to open up we talked about it towards the beginning of this I think in a, a social distancing 101 episode was regards to the movie theater biz and what it looks like on the other side of it so uh, it started now with Georgia of course opening up I wouldn't say wide but pretty close to wide. They're, they're, they're taking some risks. We'll put it that way. And the governor of the state obviously wanted movie theaters to be open. And immediately a uh, representatives from AMC and Cinemark were both like, even if we wanted to, we couldn't like, you can't just turn around and open the doors for that. North American theater organization, excuse me. I believe that's what it's called. It's NATO basically uh, released a statement saying that, yeah, none of the theaters are going to, and they're going to have to amp back up. And then AMC came out with represent representative speaking. It was a lot more clear and a lot more honest that like, there's nothing to show right now, even if we want to. There's everything has been delayed past July. So really interesting what it's going to look like, especially too, as the theaters have talked about it, that it's still, even when we get into July and August like that, that they're not going to sell out theaters. They're going to put spaces in between ticket sales and things like that. So as all this has been brewing, there has been so much talk about the, because AMC has been bleeding money for the past few years. So a lot of talk about bankruptcy, the idea of that they're, not going to necessarily go anywhere. There might be some locations closed, but most likely that they would sell to another company or merge uh, it was looking really likely. So I don't know. Do we have any further opinions on that now that we've thought about it more? Because we had a pretty good, I, I feel like we had a pretty interesting conversation on it last time. Well, I mean, the, the trouble is, is since, you know, because the States is, is obviously where most movies make most of their money, right? Like not all movies, but most movies make most of their money enough that the States is really the focal point in terms of theaters and those kind of things. So when you look at it, the issue for the theaters is not having a national lockdown in the States and it being state by state. Can they buy, you know, just like how, I don't know how the purchasing of movies for theaters works. And if it's for X number of theaters, do they pay more? Do they pay less? If it's only, you know, like you said, we can't just buy movies to show just in Georgia, right? Like it doesn't, who's going to, who would sell them that? You know, so it doesn't, it seems like it'd be a weird situation that they wouldn't know how to do until they could open up all their theaters and be like, hey, now we have the purchasing power of 3000 movie cinemas or whatever it is. Right. You're, you're essentially, you're opening doors with nothing there. So it's the idea that if you do open in those states, 
you're putting employees back at risk, which you could then get pushed back on. And, and even if it's not like you're like people are going to be angry, it could impact your business future for you to make how much money because people are still hesitant to go out. You got nothing new to show in the theaters and you're already selling less seats as it is. It wouldn't be a good business model to open now for sure. It seems very weird. And, and like you said, I just don't know. You got to assume that there are mergers or I remember you used to see happen is when a movie theater would close one of the big theaters, like hey, we're not, this isn't profitable. We're going to shut this theater down. Somebody would step in and buy it and turn it into a, you know, we used to call them dollar movie theaters back in the day, but now they're only $5 theaters or something like that, but discount prices and they show old movies. Yeah. Stuff that came out six months ago. So right. I, yeah. I, a discount. I don't know. I mean, I think this is just one, I think the next couple months are going to get even as weird as this last month and a half has been. The next few months are going to get even weirder just because this is not the only industry that's going to deal with this. Like outside of big companies that are franchised, like any nationwide company that's going to have to like how do you ramp up production? Especially like my headquarters is here, but we have offices here. And then, but we have, you know, franchises here. We have offices there. Like how many businesses are going to open or not open or do, you know, whatever it is when it's like, well, do we just, do we find a way to just open our stores in Georgia? Or do we say, screw it, we're not opening one until we can open all of them? Or, you know, and then it'll get interesting, especially like what if one state has it really bad and the state next door to them doesn't and then one of them opens and then people from that one are trying to come to the other one and it's a whole thing. Like as, as weird as the last two months have been, I feel like the next three or four are going to be even no, better. The transition is going to be hard. It's going to be difficult and yeah, definitely unique. I think the, it, as you're saying all that too, it's the idea is that it, another big thing as we talk about what what is it what is it going to look like because sony now is the most recent probably the last of the major studios the only thing that had anything on the calendar before mid-july before uh, warner brothers uh christopher nolan's tenant and um now all that's been pushed back so there is seriously until i think that's week two of july uh that you do not have a it's week three excuse me it's july 18th and then july 24th is milan those are your two July releases and then everything else that would have been notable is August on. I think it works if the theaters are open, especially nationwide in July, because you're filling up each screen less. So you have less movies competing. So you can put those on more on more screens, right? And try to still get the same kind of or similar sales as you would. But I can't see at least until the fall, a lot of people returning into the be doing those types of things. When I was, we were talking about it today, I was talking about it. And it's like, as we get closer to the summer, I think of certain things that I'll be interested in doing, like as parks open back up things that I can still do by myself. But even if certain conventions, certain concerts, certain things like that are happening, me personally, I don't know when I'm going to be ready to start doing those things again. It's definitely not going to be May. It's not going to be June. Will it be July? I don't, everything's by year right now, right? Yeah, that's a really good point. So I was talking with some some friends about stuff and it's like there are things that are going to happen that are people are going to want to get back into sitting in a room with a bunch of strangers for two and a half hours i don't know when that's going to be one of them again flying on a plane i don't know when that's going to be a thing again you know all sorts of stuff that's just like some of this isn't going to work you know when disney world opens up it's going to be full again that's one of those things that people are going to want to be able to do uh, and go back out and do those kinds of things. But I don't know about just going to the movie theater. But even those things like that, you even talk about when you realistically look at, break it down by experts and even Disney themselves behind the scenes, they're talking 2021 before you even see those theme parks back open. It's a long time. And most places, the concerts are already, you know, starting to cancel into the fall and things like that. Because like you said, I don't want to go stand in a room or stand even in a venue right next. To everybody's elbow to elbow, you're right? Like for that experience that I'm going to spend the whole time anxious about is that are any of these people sick instead of enjoying the music? So Right, I'm not going to go see the Descendants and get sweated on by the lead singers right. that reaches into the crowd. <laughs> right. And yeah, the, a million the, people slamming into me the whole time. Like obviously we've talked a ton about the cons and like the number of people who make their living from cons, but like the number of businesses and like industries whose entire business model rests on people being able to be in large groups in single places. So whether it be sporting events, concerts, theater, stand-up comedy, all of those sorts of things, like how long, if ever, do those things ever get back to the way they were? You know, like how long is it, like we may open everything up, but how long is it is before you're going to allow a place to pack, you know, 400 people into a dingy bar for a band or pack everyone into a place to see a basketball game or pack everyone into an old tech, into a comedy club to see a show like that kind of stuff. Like, does that stuff even get to come back with, I can't even imagine going to convention right now. Like we were by some friends and I, we right. still, I saw tickets to, to go to Gen Con in the end of 
July, at beginning of August, they still haven't technically canceled it yet. I assume they're going to have to, but if they don't, I don't know that I'll go. Well, you're talking Gen Con's usually one max two weeks after San Diego, right? And San Diego being like one of the most notables and they just canceled. That's, I agree. I think we're at the point to where the next announcements are going to be starting into August. And then you have shows like Planet Comic Con that canceled and then needed a date right away to try to salvage something this year. And unfortunately, they had an August date. And now you're already wondering, are they going to have to cancel the backup date even? depending on how far this goes. So it's it's interesting for sure. And, and then that's the thing on top of it, when you do get back to normal with this, some of it's going to be so crowded. And even the movie theaters, we're talking about like Christmas season box office right now is jam full. What are you going to go see? How's it going to impact it? And it's the businesses also have to make the decision to, do I push it back far enough to where I, I'm just going to take a loss this year and then hope to get as much as I can next year? Or do I push it out and hope to get something out of it? Like those decisions too, because when you've been making less money for so long, is is a little bit better than nothing? Like, you know, can I get yeah. something? Well, and, and how many can make that, how many have the, the liquidity to make that decision? Like how many conventions out there, if they don't get their alternate or don't get to do some, salvage something this year, will even have like the budget to then do next year? You know what I mean? Like how many fewer cons are there going to be nationwide next year than there were? supposed to be or like right. last year like if you take the number of cons that happened nationwide in 2019 in 2021 how much lower will that number what percentage by which will that number drop you know things that are run by read pop you know san or like san diego comic-con and wizard world those those are going to be back but how many planet comic-con size shows how many rocky mountain kind shows like how many o comic-con size shows how many smallville comic-con size shows how many are those are going to still be solvent having not gotten to, not only not had not gotten to have their show for a year but having had to sell tickets you know sell hotel rooms sell vendor space and then in a lot of cases then refund all of that no that's crazy it is it's definitely a, a, a tough tough situation to think about and and i think one of y'all pointed out earlier too is we we think about the individuals that we specifically, you know, deal with with cons and that are struggling, but there's a lot of what we'd consider small business, really, when you look at it, and Smallville Con, the people that run that, that's a small business, the Ocon, Matt Steam and all that small business and how they're being impacted as well, for sure. I don't know. I think we're all on the same page with it. I think it's, it seems to probably be a thing is, like I said, personally, when I'm ready to return to some normalcy, as we keep saying it this summer, I'm thinking outdoor, I want to get to the mountains. I want to get to a park. I want to do this type of stuff because I still have space, but I'm actually now out of the house doing things again, right? And it's exactly right. I think what we said, and Adam, you worded it best with whoever you were talking to about that. Like it is not at the top of my list to go sit someplace for how many hours with a bunch of strangers and me being the type of person I am exactly. I'm going to spend that whole time anxious about all those people. First cough you hear, the first anything. Yeah. You're going to freak out and I'm not even going to enjoy the movie or the concert or the event. That's what we talked about last time is that person's also going to be right behind you. And you're gonna... Right. Yeah. Cause they always sit right behind you. They're always right behind you. And <laughs> sure. Maybe it'll be two rows behind you now, but they're still just right there. And that cough is just goes straight out and you know it's right. coming down on you. Right. And so as soon as it happens, you should get up and leave, right? Just, all right, well, this is not fun. I'm out now. I'm going to go bathe in hand sanitizer and, and never come out of my house ever again. Thank you very much, person. Awesome. So this week uh, over at Project Nerd, make sure you check out, I think we'll be sharing our social media. We wanted to help our uh, Meets Illustrated out there. Obviously, Jason Mintz, one of our fans, the brand, another one that is impacted because his full-time living is by the convention and his art sales and everything like that. You can follow him on social media. He's been live streaming. He had his art supplies stolen right before this started. So like double whammy because, oh, okay, I can go make up the money at conventions and rebuy these art supplies. Uh, rough. So I know we, uh, part of our project near fundraising, sent him some money. He was kind enough to draw us up a little mascot. Tyler wanted to know when we became bronies, but it's, it's pretty cool. We'll have it posted there. Uh, obviously want to get people. It wasn't, a, wasn't supposed to be mean spirited. I like it. It's really cool. It's, it's kind of, it's cute. It it's, is. It is definitely the power of friendship style. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's its Jason's style, the Tyke style, so it's a pony too. Um, I actually have sitting right here for you guys to see, uh, Allie, you know, Cantarella Inc. Um, she had an original on there, so I picked that up uh, to help her out. Uh, we might be doing some auctions and stuff too, so a lot of the stuff that we as a group or individuals in the team have purchased, we'll be looking at putting together possibly an auction to raise some more funds. Of course, logistics on that still being sorted, but keep an eye on anywhere you see the Project Nerd stuff. Have you guys picked up any other cool geeky stuff? I know these online comic auctions are killing me. I'm spending so much money from these local comic book stores 
Facebook auction feed. They're showing up. I'm going to go support them. And then there's, oh, well, we got this guy. I'm like, okay, I got to bid on it. I got to do it. I got to do it. And I've spent so much money on comics. I think other geeky things. I know uh, Funko Pop dropped their child pop finals, the child from The Mandalorian. You're talking about that thing's probably sold out left and right. Uh, and before we started recording, I've said I've been trying to chase that 10 inch Boba Fett pop final uh, that's exclusive to Target, but they won't ship it on their app. Unfortunately, you have to go in store to find it. I don't know. You guys picking up any other cool geeky stuff or even not picking it up? Tyler, you mentioned uh, window shopping because I do have a lot of carts across multiple browsers full as well. I have looked at many cool things, including a lot of the Hot Toys, Star Wars figurines. I've also been looking at a lot of Legos. I've considered buying Legos and getting a Lego addiction. I've played with Legos in a long time and I love building big Legos. I have a lot of time. I don't have a lot of room. That's my biggest problem. I'd have to make a table to be my Lego table. I'd have to clear off all my figurines that I'm painting right now and make a new station. So looked at a lot of cool figurines, considered Legos, considered puzzles as well. I know. So my family has been doing puzzles and sending pictures. My main entertainment has been cooking. I've looked at a lot of cooking stuff because I've been cooking a lot. I mean, I cook a lot anyway, but I'm cooking a lot more. So I looked at some really nice knives the other day. Almost pulled the trigger. I always feel bad, though, ordering anything to be delivered that's not food. So they shouldn't also, be delivering Legos to my house. Like, that's not a thing that should fair. be happening. Also, really sharp, really expensive knives in the middle of a pandemic might send a questionable uh you know it's not the best look having a nice chef's knife is important and i have a nice i have a i don't have a lot i don't have a full set of nice knives i do have a very nice chef's knife so it's working fine i sharpened it the other day it's working good but it'd be nice to have a full set like a nice paring knife maybe a cleaver right I don't know. we'll see yeah because i have a chef's knife and it's used for everything and i already increased what i was doing cooking and in, in the guy and actually what well, was about a year to a year ago a lot of those memories have been popping up on facebook and we all got together playing at comic con and tyler baked his fresh bread and adam brought his home brewed beer and everything like that. I was thinking of all that stuff. But yeah, I'm, I've been one knife. Nike and Vans have both done great things for their employees, have really tried to keep paying people. And Vans is even doing the foot the bill run to where uh, local stores that typically sell Vans, so skate shops and things like that, can design a style. They put it on their website. If you order them, it goes as if you were like buying it in store. They get the normal amount of uh, cutback. So I've been wanting to support those two businesses, right? They're doing great things. Got to help them out. Other local businesses that I've tried to help with, uh, I've spent so much. I think I helped out, uh, head on over to, uh, what is it? Uh, Sketchcolorings.com. So Jeff Alke, we talked about that. Uh, Adam, so we've known that guy for forever. He's a great colorist, uh, great artist. They're doing a lot of animation now too. So I've tried to, I ordered a few sketch colorings from him. You said we've known him for a long time. I was trying to think of it. Did you? Did we buy those those turtle prints? from him when planet was in overland park i mean was it i feel like it was year one of project nerd when we set up so year one of project nerd we yeah that was in overland park then i know so it was yeah it may be maybe it was overland park was it so the first year we set up first year we had a booth was the first year at bartle was at bartle but the first year of project nerd when a bunch of us just went was overland park was overland park but i i don't remember we did definitely interview bulky the first year we set up so I feel like it was that year. So I feel like it would have been, what, 2013 still? I mean, that's a, that's quite a way. Because that, that would have been, I feel like that's right, because that was the same. Yeah, it had to have been that one. That was the one where we shared our booth back with the Black Ranger. and Walter we Jones, yeah. Walter, Walter Jones was our <laughs> Walter Jones was our neighbor. And that was the one where we also... Adam Baldwin. Had, I, Adam Baldwin interview was that one. Ray I Park think I, did the proposal thing with the, oh, the yeah. man. It, yeah. It's got to be that one. Yeah, I think that was the one, was a great one. Uh, that's where we met uh, Ant. Yeah, Ant too. Lucha, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. We met him there too, which, oh, did you see his new Ninja Turtle prints? Dude, they're that you so can pick stupid. up on a store. They're yeah. so good. Oh, ridiculous. I need those so bad in my life. But uh, yeah, I, I guess as we're sitting here fanboying about all this, obviously go check all these people out. Uh, go support. If you're listening to a podcast called The Nerdcast, you're probably familiar with artists, comic book creators, local comic stores, anything like that. If you're not, go dig on it. Go across Project Nerd. I think it's the comicbooklocator.com can even get you your local comic stores. So many of them are doing Facebook sales, doing uh, still doing poll list as we uh, looked at Diamond says that it, by the end of May, they should be back to distributing and DC has found alternate means to get their comics in stores. A lot of ways you can help out here. Obviously, uh, we don't have an open link right now for the Project Nerd fundraising we did, but if for any reason you're listening to us, you do want to throw some money here for us to help. We've helped over eight different either families or individuals who have been impacted by this and it's been great, uh, rewarding, and we thank everybody who's donated. I know a lot of people we know, there was tons of names that when we did the Facebook fundraiser that I'd never even seen before too that donated, so thank you so 
so much for all that. Again, we'll try to get some more ways to get that going as we'd like to extend that. Because I think the best way to put it is we've talked about all these things here. This is obviously not, this is an ending in May. Even as the shelter in place orders come up, there's going to be such a long impact on it. A lot of people that you know, that we know, obviously out of business, out of a job and need some support right now. So not even us, there's all kinds of organizations right out there trying to help right now. Like I said, we see a lot of terrible things on the news, but it's overshadowing a lot of great people doing a lot of amazing things. So as we wind down on time, I don't know if you guys had done it. Don't feel like we've done it as formally as we normally do. I need to say, let's do some final thoughts. Uh, so that way, Tyler can say, um, what am I reading? List one book and then list five other books that are coming out. And then Adam can go play some video games and tell us the video game he's playing, even though he already told us what he's playing. But let's do that. Let's, uh, Adam, why don't you start us with some final thoughts? I will do that. My final thought is not video game related. It is play D&D with your friends. I just got off before yeah. getting on this call. I just got off a, a video call with some friends of mine as we were setting up our campaign. So we spent two and a half hours kind of talking about what we wanted to do. Our DM did a great job asking us all the kind of questions we want. We kind of developed how our team is going to come together, how our party's going to fill out and creating the setting and some basic rules so our DM can build our own campaign, not pull something from a book or anything like that. So really excited about that. There's amazing resources out there. D&D Beyond is a fantastic online service that will allow you to uh, have your character sheets all online. You can set up all your points and, and skills and everything like that. You've got uh, Roll20, which is doing free stuff. I mean, there's all sorts of online sources. And then you can use Zoom for free for up to 40 minutes if you're not during the business day, they'll probably extend your video call for free. You won't have to pay anything. But otherwise, if it ends at 40 minutes, you can just cancel it and start a new one and you get another 40 minutes. You'll be that's all right. You, that's when you take your potty breaks. Yeah, right. Everybody goes to the bathroom. You come in, you keep going. You can talk to your friends. You can see them. You can have your own roles. You can do everything you want to right there. I'm really excited about getting a full campaign going and kind of everything we've got, our setting and everything. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So Awesome. Well, first of all, thanks for the invite, Tyler. And I appreciate that, Adam. Yeah. It, um, no, it's, it's a first time online. We've got cool. to do, we're running a small cool. group first. It's cool. It's cool. I we told didn't, Tyler. I didn't know you had other friends anyways, but I mean. I told Tyler like six weeks ago to make us a D&D &D campaign. And he said, oh yeah, yeah I'll look that into that. Actually and, happened. And, uh, never heard anything. Now he's so. tech support. I got, I got kind of busy but <laughs> i now I, but i now that i've gotten my new job we can think about it I would okay have to okay i got a few people who are interested and we got a few project nerd people but uh great thing about that too is that no matter what happens to your sheltering place orders no matter where they are if they're different that's something that can continue on for good in time and is always a fun oh, yeah. thing to do for sure mm -hmm. tyler what do you got for us kind of in the same vein i haven't gotten to do any D, &D or like tabletop rpg but i have been using tabletopia and tabletop simulator with some friends to try and play board games so play had a few different nights where we got on and played some games using, you know, just using a Zoom chat and then using Tabletop Simulator on Steam to play. You know, we played some Brass Birmingham the other night, played some Wingspan, played some uh, The God's War by Sandy Peterson. It's a lot of fun. I, I miss board gaming. That's one thing I've done. That's like the one local business I made a short point. I've ordered some board games and some gaming supplies, but can't go into anyone's house to play board games. And I miss that a lot. So play some board games. If I have to throw a book out there, I would say... The Robert Jackson Bennett's second book in the Founders Trilogy. The first one was Foundry Side, which I loved a lot. The second one, Shorefall, just came out last week, and it's fantastic. So I'm a big Robert Jackson Bennett fan. If you've never read his Divine City series. I uh, like had to, to throw a book out there is what he said. I said, if I have to, because <laughs> you, you set me up for it. Uh, Robert Jackson Bennett is a fantastic author. I loved his The Divine City series. If you've ever, you ever get a chance to pick up City of Stairs, if you like that, you'll like a lot of the other stuff he's done. But this new series is a different world. I really like Foundry Side and Shorefall's been so good so far. So I'm on what's I can't what's the name of it? The Death One with by Christopher Moore. A no. dirty job. Yes, thank you. That's the one. So I just started that one this week. I'm onto a new one. So that should be interesting. Uh, my my final thought is, uh, first of all, great ways for you guys to socialize, give advice for people to socialize on there too. Obviously, if you guys got any thoughts that are listening to, um, I do just want to give you so many thanks, uh, people. I when I log in to post these podcasts across any of our feeds, just seeing the numbers go up, uh, we can't thank you enough for all of you listeners. The amount of people that listen to this podcast still confuses us. We still think there's a glitch in one of our parents' uh, one of our parents' like a IP address or something. It's it's sending. It's just 
reek ticking or something. I don't know. Yeah, my mom talking about Netflix and Ozarks makes me think she's a lot more computer savvy than I thought. <laughs> That's all right. But we do appreciate it. Obviously, if you're listening to us here, as I mentioned earlier, almost all of you come to us via our feed. Now, whether you're picking us up on Spotify, Google, Apple, Stitcher, or the other places, uh, this is the Project Nerd Productions or Project Nerd Podcast feed. If you go to any of those places and you search Project Nerd, you can now also find the Project Nerd Gaming feed, which has Game Pitch on it, which has been really fun. Our boys Eli and JD are doing some fun video game podcasts over there. This week, we launch our new D&D. It's going to be an opening series of it's going to be a walk through the instructions and how to play, which then is going to roll into a live play of a group. So that's going to be really cool. Obviously, uh, the individual feeds you can pick up is everything from High Five Podcast, G Spot, Dude Sweet, Meeple Skills. Modern Sex is still out there. We haven't had many new episodes, but it's still out there for you to catch up on if you have anything. All of those are individual. If you're not sure, head on over to projectnerd.com, project-nerd.com. Click on the podcast tab. We got all of them there too. And I know you guys are eager. We were just talking about in a group. Gallo, who is also eager. Hashtag sports ball was supposed to start, but there's really not a lot of sports to talk about on top of Gallo, uh, which we do give him a major shout out and thanks for being on the front line through all of this and working crazy hours. Uh, has been very busy, clearly, but uh, check that out. And of course, Head on over to Geek Garage, geek-garage.com or on social media. Tell them that we sent you over from Project Nerd. Check that crew out. They're great. All of the people we know from there have been fantastic. We can't thank them enough for supporting, uh, financially keeping this feed alive. And uh, we, we just appreciate them greatly. And we look forward to when there's going to be events back in place. But they've also done some cool things. I know they said they have events. They've done some cool drive-bys for young kids' birthday parties. Uh, drive-bys sounds terrible. They get in their cool geeky vehicles, drive past the party and make some cool noises. And they're not kidding. Killing any kids. Can we call them parades or <laughs> something? Parades. There we go. Drive by parade, maybe. Drive by parades. I don't know, but it's uh, that's it. But this is episode 226 of the Nerdcast. Like I said, make sure you're checking out all the other content we're giving to you each week because we're, we're pretty much at least one podcast a day. Um, and I say pretty much, we've been pretty consistent with it throughout the weeks. Uh, so if you're bored, you need something to listen to, check us out. Even if you're not bored, you just want to listen to us, check us out. All right, guys. I guess we'll see. We'll see you in a, a month or so. I don't know. Maybe a week this time. Who knows? As far as I know, it was yesterday was the last time we recorded. We don't know anymore. As Tyler pointed out, it time, is, at, time, time has no meeting anymore. <laughs> week 17 of April, right? So uh, with that, I bid you all adieu. Same nerd time, same nerd channel. Catch you next week. Bye. Hey, pro nerds. Thanks for listening to the podcast. If you like the Nerdcast and other amazing Project Nerd podcasts, please go give us a subscription, a like, a review, wherever you find us, as we need your love and support to continue making awesome content. Next week, we'll be back with another great episode of Nerdcast, as well as other original Project Nerd podcasts.